Hello, church family. Here's your Wednesday minister moment. You may have seen the political ad either in the news or maybe on Facebook. It's an ad that comes from the state of Utah. Two men are running for governor, Spencer Cox and uh, Chris Peterson. Cox is a, a Republican, Peterson is a Democrat. And they do this ad together. Now, they both encourage people to vote for them individually in the ad. They also highlight the fact that they don't necessarily see eye to eye on uh, the various issues. They have a difference of opinion on how they'd handle those things. But they did this ad together because they wanted to show people that you could actually differ in your opinions about things, but still treat each other with respect, even if you're running for the same office. They, what they said was that, you know, we're gonna have to work together after the election's over, so no matter who wins, we need to treat each other right so we can work together. And they make this statement near the end of their ad. They say, let's show the country that there's a better way. That made me think about uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapters 12 and 13. In chapter 12, Paul begins to talk about spiritual gifts. He talks about how we all have different spiritual gifts that come from the same spirit. And then he describes it like this, that we're a part of the same body, where Jesus is the head, but all of us function as different parts of the body. We look different. We have different functions. We have different roles. We have different talents, different gifts. Some seem more important than others, or they stand out more than others, and yet all are extremely important. In fact, he says uh, that, that when one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. When one part rejoices, all parts rejoice with it. We're all important because we are a part of the same family, the same body, even though we may look different, we may act different, though, even though we may have different responsibilities. And he says this at the very end of chapter 12. He says, now eagerly desire the greater gifts, going back to the spiritual gifts again, desire the greater gifts. And then he says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. He says, I'm showing you a better way, the most excellent way. And then he begins to describe what that is. It's love. He says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You can do all kinds of great things for others, but if you don't do it out of love, then it doesn't amount to much. And so love is extremely important. In fact, it's the most excellent way. Well, what does love look like? He describes it beginning in verse four. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does, is not, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. That's what God is calling us to, to treat others with love, to treat others with respect, to not dishonor them, but to honor them, no matter what. He talks about spiritual gifts again in chapter 13, and then he says this at the very end. He says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. God calls us to love others no matter what. We live in a, a season of, of political anger and unrest where people are judging others and becoming very angry with one another for a number of different reasons. There are a lot of, a lot of times we struggle with holding grudges against people, not forgiving, and yet if we love, we will be willing to forgive. That's what God calls us to. So let's help people to see that there's something better. If we truly are the children of God and we are seeking to imitate our Father in heaven, then let's follow his example. Because 1 John tells us that God is love. Let's show people a better way. That's my encouragement to you. I hope you have a great day and a great week.